There are thousands of genetic disorders that contribute to mental health, many of which we don't yet have a handle on. There are many that are rare, one of which is SYNGAP1. Mutations in SYNGAP1 are one of the most recently described disorders, only discovered about 10 years ago. It's a relatively rare disorder, probably affecting around 1% or so of all individuals with intellectual disability. And uh, at this point, there really are not uh, effective treatments for patients with SYNGAP1 mutations. And really, we need continued research to understand the symptoms associated with uh, SYNGAP1 mutations and develop personalized treatments for those disorders. So the clinical features of SYNGAP1 is so varied that many genetic disorders can present similarly. The way to make the diagnosis really is genetic testing. I would encourage families to follow their gut instinct. If they truly feel something is different about their child and there's something going on, to ask to speak to a geneticist, to ask to have a comprehensive workup. We were on a nine-year diagnostic odyssey to figure out what was going on. and. In retrospect, I know I would have pushed harder for some more comprehensive genetic testing. This is definitely a case where you may not see physical features in a child that would point towards something underlying genetic that's going on, but there in fact is. So mutations in SYNGAP1 cause a devastating neurodevelopmental disorder for which we have no treatment at this time. And it's only through research that we can identify targeted treatments for these patients and for other patients with these sorts of devastating neurodevelopmental disorders. The SYNGAP1 gene plays an important role in a brain function. It's important for us to learn and remember information and the changes in that gene impacts how that protein functions and consequently manifests generally with learning disability, which could vary from mild to severe. Epilepsy is a common clinical feature. Behavioral challenges, some individuals have autism. By far all have sensory processing difficulties. SYNGAP1 affects many aspects of brain-based function. For SYNGAP1 patients, there are no targeted treatments. Um, we treat the patient symptomatically with medications that only treat the symptoms, but not the underlying cause. And without collaboration between researchers, clinicians, and patient groups, it would be extremely difficult to advance our understanding of the disorder. It's so important for families to participate in research because it's the only way we're going to get data to work towards finding treatments. And the idea of participating in research is overwhelming, especially for working busy families, but it's not as daunting as it seems once you get your feet wet. We have participated in a few research studies. Sometimes it's just answering some questionnaires, sometimes it's bringing your child in to participate in some activities or some studies, but I know that contributing to the research process makes me feel like I'm doing something and helping me part, be part of the solution and get closer to having a treatment for my son. There's often a, a difficulty in initiating research studies because of the lack of funding due to their rarity. And so it's really important for foundations and individuals to, to contribute to launching the necessary research for understanding these disorders. The funding that we are bringing into the organization are supporting these strategic programs. And, and these programs that we have, like working with Texas Children's, Kennedy Krieger, Stanford, and many other organizations and KOLs that are studying SYNGAP around the world, give myself, a mother of a child with SYNGAP, and the families that are supporting our organization, the hope they need to keep going. Having the Bridge the Gap Foundation has been a lifesaver for me. It's, we finally met our people. I finally see videos and pictures of children that are like my child. I finally am connecting with parents that have the same challenges that I'm having, that someone might post, you know, my child is struggling with this. Does anyone else have this experience? And 10 people write back and we all are supporting each other and sharing strategies and that has been the silver lining in this diagnosis. The funding for our organization will go to our strategic plans to help support our mission, which is education, research, and awareness. Our 
programs, such as a registry program, will be supported. We will be supporting the families through our family meetups and awareness. And then we have our international uh, Syngap one conference that will support our scientific community as a whole on top of allowing the families to participate into the research to know what is actually going on to keep them in the loop. Then we have our centers of excellence that are going to provide the care and the, and the needed experts that our families need. And so we need these type of funds to support these programs. And as we bring all of this together, eventually, and hopefully soon in the near future, we're gonna be finding the treatment that we've been searching so hard for. Funding for rare diseases might seem like putting a lot of money towards a very small patient population, but it's very possible that a treatment that could impact a rare disease community can be applied to a much broader population and a wide variety of diseases and illnesses, and something that might seem to only be applicable for a small population could actually impact millions of people.